Hey folks, Fernando doing another video for the More Survivalists and in this case talking about knives, specifically knife steel. And a question that I got recently regarding knife steels is how good is 1095 as steel for a survival knife? That's a high carbon steel. It's uh, pretty much perfect for a survival knife, right? Well, kind of and maybe not so much. Hey, let's get to this. Look, um, Pretty much all steels are good. All steels in the market uh, are there for a reason. They fill a specific role. In the case of 1095, you're talking about one of the most basic, one of the oldest high carbon steels uh, used in knives in general. The uh, K-Bar, this is an original World War II K-Bar knife. This knife is made of 1095, your basic high carbon steel. It's the same steel used these days for the Glock knife. Glock it does their knives in 1095 uh, carbon steel. So what is it? It's perfect then? It's the per no, actually no. Look, when it comes to steels, you're basically looking at three characteristics that you want to take into account. How uh, tenacious, how tough that steel is. Toughness is a big part, especially in a survival knife. Corrosion uh, is another aspect to take into account. Your stainless steel knife will not corrode, will not rust as easily as your basic carbon steel knife. And resistance to wear, wear resistance, how well it, it holds that edge, that is uh, also a factor to keep in mind. And when it comes to the more, uh, let's call it high-end uh, knife collecting community and some of the fancier collectors out there, that's one of the main things they look at in terms of uh, of premium steels. Uh, how much wear resistance do I have in that steel? How much edge retention do I get out of that knife? Now, this is going to be depending on the role that you have in mind. For example, someone was joking in a video I did recently about inflation regarding you know not getting into debt, not buying stuff that you don't actually need, and is and they joked about, hey, so how am I am I going to be buying my Aitor Fairfall knife, which is like I don't know how much it is these days, like 200 bucks or so, which is not a bad price considering the quality of manufacturing and materials used. Um, but you know what? I, I replied to the guy and, you know, maybe you don't need a Fairfile Aitor knife, which is, sure, it's a knife I designed and I, you know, got to do exactly what I wanted with it, which is which is awesome, by the way, especially made by a, a quality manufacturer like a Aitor working from Spain and not some Chinese, you know, nothing manufacturer, uh, you don't have to buy this. Maybe with, with your 40 or 30 buck uh, a Glock knife, you're perfectly fine. This is a fine knife for the money. It's made in Austria, so it's a quality manufacturer as well. Man, this is made by Glock. How much more of a reliable brand can you get? Now, yes, of course, it is a bayonet knife. It is not uh, so much of a, of a cutting tool as it is more of a poking your enemy, fighting, you know, stabbing uh, your, your enemy and just, you know, utilitarian tool. In fact, I've been using this one lately for, you know, painting. I'm, I'm you know, doing some, uh, some stuff around the house and I use this knife for mixing the paint. Yes, of course, I could have used a stick. I just didn't have one nearby, at least not something flat enough. So I was using it to mix paint and scrub some crayon from the wall that was, you know, tainting through the paint. Anyway, it does the job. Uh, this is the kind of thing that you would do with a knife in, in this budget and with this kind of, of capability. So, does this mean that 1095 it, it's high carbon steel, so it's the best steel? No. You know, carbon steel comes in a wide range of options. In fact, you have extremely high carbon steel that also happens to be stainless, blowing mines all over the place, right? Well, but the thing is that you often see people that talk about stuff they have no idea. They haven't been, in, especially if you haven't been involved much in the manufacturing process of these things, you, you don't get how important it is to lower your budget, your price for the actual building of the knife as much as possible. The main reason why manufacturers use this, knife, this steel, it's because it's cheap. It's available and it's affordable. It is, in fact, the cheapest steel you can get. Your basic 1095 carbon steel. Does this mean it's bad? No, of course not. It's holding an edge quite nicely, right? So you're leaning strongly on the on, on, on how tough and, and, and good it is at, at at holding its, its edge, but it's not particularly good at that. 
you have pretty much everything else in this table will have a lot better uh, 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 re um, wear resistance and it's going to be holding an edge a lot longer. In fact, the steel I use in the Aidot is an N680 boiler steel made in, in Austria, which is extremely corrosion resistant and extremely tough. And it actually holds an edge better than your Tang 95. It actually, it's noticeable. If you test it, you will see it yourself. You don't have to go with a Katra or, or Sharpie a test to actually verify this in a lab. Even doing this yourself, you will notice this. And if you go to bladeforms.com, you find people trying out different things, it will be noticeable that this uh, knife will hold an edge quite a bit longer than this one. Specifically because of the heat treatment that you have. In this case specifically, Glock is heat treated to 55 Rockwell hardness because again, bayonet knife, not so much of a, of a cutting tool even though it cuts well enough. And I mean it, you know, it does cut well enough. Because as, as you can see here, this has been, I mean, even after being used to cut chunks of, of sheetrock from a wall, I sharpened it and it's back to a very nice, you know, almost razor sharpness. Uh, well, I know how to sharpen a knife. This is a, a rather easy uh, knife to sharpen because of the steel and because of the heat treatment. It's actually quite soft. 55 Rockwell is one of those things that in the uh, marketing side of, of the knife industry would be unacceptable. That's just too soft. Well, yeah, it is too soft and you need to sharp sharpen it often. It it is easy to sharpen though, which means you have to learn how to sharpen your knives. Now this one, yeah, it's going to be holding the edge considerably longer, right? And one of the things that I appreciate and one of the things I went with uh, with this uh, steel specifically is because not only do you have a knife that's going to be holding your edge longer than your 1095, it's also hardened to a much hardness. It's around 57, 58 Rockwell hardness and it's not directly proportional. Every notch you get of hardness is considerably harder than the one before. Um, and this is a knife I actually use quite a bit, even though it looks brand new. That's one of the big advantages that you have in some of the nicer steels compared to your basic 1095, which is the aspect of corrosion and rust resistance. The market is, you know, using 1095 a lot because it's affordable, it's cheap, it's cheap to make as well. The machines take this quite nicely to sharpening and so on. It's not going to be wearing up your tools nearly as much as these other steels. Uh, but in, in terms of the knife not rusting in front of your very eye, of your own eyes, is finding a solution in terms of coating. Usually they do the tactical epoxy crappy uh, coating that I hate so much, which uh, just gets dirty all the time. Um, and it's a pain in the ass to keep clean. If you ha have a, a knife that is, at least the way I see it, a survival knife, it should be easy to clean because that knife may be used for preparing food. If you have to cut your food, prepare a meal, your knife needs to be easily cleaned uh, and it also it's also going to be cutting better uh, if you have these knives with a, a textured epoxy crap you see that it starts peeling off fast that peeling off means it's creating even more traction as you cut. It's not going to be cutting as well. Although, if you hammer it through a log, yeah, you're going to be peeling the stuff off. Uh, even here in the Glock knife, which this hasn't got that much uh, traction, which I appreciate, even then, it's just um, a paint over an, uh, a steel that is going to be wearing off fast. So this starts looking not so great soon enough. This, uh, you can use it a lot and that's not going to be the case. Uh, same with, uh, with this. Uh, Bussy knife. Bussy uh, uses their own Infi steel, which is kind of stainless, very tough, not great at edge retention though, uh, but it's tough as nails. Uh, and it's uh, rust resistant enough, it's stainless enough so that you can keep it very clean. I've used this knife to chop small uh, trees, large branches, and you wouldn't be able to tell by the kind of wear that you see because it's a tough knife tough steel, tough construction in general, uh, with my Carta handles, full tang, yeah man, that thing is going to be holding on extremely well. With your um, K-Bar knife, legendary knife, well, you often find 
that these are quite rusted. These are often bent here in the grip because of the rat tail tang. And yes, it is a legendary blade, but having bought an original uh, World War II uh, original K-Bar knife, I can tell you, they are usually in pretty crappy condition because of all of these things that I'm explaining here. They don't hold on time nearly as well. One of the things that has really going against it is the narrow tang and the leather washer. These are an organic materials, gonna be rotting. Uh, but you see it when you buy a, uh, an original K-Bar in the market, the condition directly relates to the price. Uh, a knife like this, it's not gonna be cheap because it's in rather good condition. And uh, a, an original K-Bar in even better condition or like new condition, that's gonna be extremely expensive. That's gonna be very expensive. Condition in, in collectors you know, means a lot. Now, if you look at the current bayonet of the US military, the M9, they're going with a stainless steel, 420 uh, HC, high carbon stainless steel, but stainless steel nonetheless, it's a good call. I think that uh, it, it makes sense. You know, I get it that for the terms of, in terms of price, ease of manufacturing, and especially with the lightweight model that they're going for, this makes sense. Um, I'd really like to see a, a stainless steel version of this, though. Uh, I think it would be, you know, a, a, a great, great knife if this was in a in a good stainless steel, properly heat treated and being tough. But you know, it's it's a tool, and it's not something that it's particularly intended as a long term survival survival tool where you're going to be cooking your meals with your beaten to crap Glock knife, right? You could still do it, you just have to be a little bit more careful about keeping it clean, you have to be a little bit more careful about keeping it from rusting, especially in wet environments and high humidity places. This though, a beast. The narrow tank thing here with this uh, screw cap, some people don't like. In general, I've seen some um, uh, fantastic results in terms of, of the abuse resistance that you can get out of an M9. Uh, would a full tank construction be even better? Sure. Would it be more expensive? Sure, as well. It would be more expensive because you're going to be using a lot more material. Uh, having said that, um, yeah, for people that want it, because this knife is actually heavier than mine. And this is, you know, uh, a thick stock full tank knife, and it's yet lighter than because it has all of this metal stuff going on here and the cap and all this. So you have a process that it's maybe a bit more easy to mass produce. There's quite a bit of hand finishing going on here in these knives. Um, so yeah, you pay for that. Now, is it cost 200 bucks for, for my knife, 40 bucks or 30 bucks for the Glock knife? Is it a three, four, five times better? Man, it's really gonna be up to you. How much do you value that extra edge retention? How much you value that you know considerably greater uh, corrosion resistance and considerably greater uh, um, toughness of, of the blade because of the steel use and most of all because of the amount of mass use in each knife. You have to keep that in mind as well. Rather than the steel, which is one of the things that people obsess a little bit over, especially when they start getting into all of this, it's really not about the steel, it's mostly about the geometry of the blade, if it's suited for your intended needs, and the heat treatment. Even the cheapest 4, 420HC steel, if it's properly heat treated, it and it's a well-designed blade, it will do much better than a poorly designed premium steel blade. You know, even with a good heat treatment, even with a great heat treatment, it's gonna be having edge, great edge retention, but man, it's a crappy geometry, not great design. You know, actually one of the things that sometimes you, you come across in, in the Bussy Knights, which I love, I have a large collection of these things, and you know, I'm very happy I do. Sometimes the designs are over the top, too much of a aesthetic thing, rather than how practical it ends up being. One of my personal, uh, you know, <laughs> things that I don't like is a choil thing. I understand they do it for ease of sharpening and so on, but I feel this is a waste of time. This is why in my own knife, I say, screw that, no. Give me edge all over the blade. 
nothing wasted with this sort of thing. And the grip is even, this is a, an iconic knife because it's the a Team Gemini Light Brigade use, well, there's a, a difference in the scales here, but it's the same knife used in The Walking Dead. So it's an iconic knife for other reasons besides how practical or impractical it is. This is a beast of a blade, maybe too heavy for the purposes of, of some people. Uh, now, you wanna chop something down? Yeah, this thing is gonna be doing it, right? Um, the cost, though, may be something more than you're willing to pay. When is it that you want to go into some of the uh, um, premium boutique type of, of steels? Probably when you're going for some of the smaller blades, because, for example, in this case, and this is a perfect example, I have two uh, Leatherman knives here, right? This is a, a Sidekick, this is the Fancier Charge, which is the one I use most of the time. Now, here you have in the blade, you have your basic, uh, where the hell is that thing? You have your basic 420HC steel. Does this thing cut? Yes, of course it cuts. And it is stainless steel and it's tough enough for its, for its intended use. So does it cut as well as a, you know, a S30V steel? Yeah. Yes, it does. Yes. Any, any chunk of steel properly sharpened will cut, right? Um, now the difference though is, uh, the tenacity of this steel, it's not really gonna be all that great, but you're talking about a small blade. You know, you don't wanna, uh, you know, go so much in terms of how tenacious and how, uh, how much tough this is, because any amount of toughness that you get out of the steel and the heat treatment itself, it's gonna be beaten by the geometry of the blade, because it's a tiny, thin blade. So even if you get the, if, of steel, it's kind of wasted here. Now, kind of wasted would be the uh, kind would kind of would be the, the uh, key words here because you have these as well. You have the fancier steel. Now, fancier for what? Fancier for edge retention, right? Because it's not so much about making this you know a steel I can just lever with and use for prying. Either one of these. If I pry enough, I'm gonna be breaking it. Now, if I pry with both of these, am I gonna be breaking maybe this one before I break this one? Yes, because of 420 HC not being particularly uh, tough, right? It's likely to happen first. Likely doesn't mean it's always the case. Someone uses it for levering and opening a drawer, doesn't snap it, I go with my own, do some, some other stupid thing that I shouldn't be doing in the first place, and maybe I do break it, right? Oh, this means that AC is better, no. The idea here is that this steel in particular has quite a bit better edge retention. And this means I'm not gonna be sharpening the knife nearly as often. Both are gonna be equally crappy in terms of how uh, tough they are, mostly because of a geometry thing. Both are quite uh, corrosion resistant, but this one is gonna be giving me the practical advantage of I don't have to sharpen it nearly as often. Every once in a while I sharpen it and I use this damn thing all the time, and still that edge is most likely gonna be sharp enough for whatever I need. This one, sharp, yes, as, as long as I sharpen it often enough. This is going to be requiring it, I don't know, yeah, half as much I need to sharpen, you know, it's hard to put an exact number on that. And yes, you have the, 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 the Katra and Sharpie test so as to lab test these things, but it depends on how you use it as well and the geometry of each blade. But yeah, this is definitely something that you have to sharpen less often, right? Now, when it comes to your old 1095. Is it super tough? No, it's, I mean, it's not gonna be a, as tough as this uh, stainless steel. It's actually one of the least tough steels in the table. You know, your VG10, which is very close to the N680 and the N690, VG10 is gonna be having a lot better uh, edge retention than your 1095. It is stainless and it's quite a bit tougher as well than your 1095. So why is it that people think that 1095 is the best thing for for survival lives because they honestly don't know any better. Anyone that says that 1095 is a perfect seal for survival life, they just don't know what they're talking about. And you know, maybe if you talk more and ex what is that you mean by it and explain that, and maybe they do understand what I'm explaining here, that it's not a particularly tough steel, it's not a particularly great steel at anything. It's mostly a cheap steel that is okay enough. And especially when you're talking about survival knives, they're big enough, large enough, 
enough that the, the toughness is you know already there because of the amount of steel that you have. Having said that, you've seen many 1095 survival knives snap because due to marketing, they harden them way too much, trying to go for that extra edge retention that it's so sought, sought after by the knife connoisseurs, and they get too low on how tenacious that steel is, and it snaps. Anyway, guys, that's what I have to say about this. You know, all steels are, are, are good. If not, they wouldn't be in the market. Just know what you're looking for, know what each of these is capable of, and buy from quality manufacturers. Doesn't matter what you're buying. If it's made from someone that's a reliable company, you're probably gonna be having uh, a good result with it. And if it's a, a you know, no name brand kind of thing, you're probably gonna be disappointed and uh, unpleasantly surprised. See you in the next video, take care.